Have them, but I know that felt good. You guys can high five somebody. Say hello to somebody. Listen, <clears throat> this morning, get, we're going to give them a get rap welcome. We have a great uh, a teaching pastor out of San Antonio. Let me tell you, I met him. Well, they didn't actually meet him, meet him. But I was introduced to him about five years ago by the Brights. And so, you know, time has went by. We've chit-chatted a few times, texted a few times. But like here recently, while I was in the bathroom. <laughs> Weird place, but I had, you know, I was studying emotions and all of a sudden I felt in my spirit. I can say I felt in my spirit, man, just his name out of nowhere. Like I don't talk to him every day. So it was just a random Joel mom, Joel mom. I'm like, Joel, mom. I'm like, all right. And then I started thinking, I heard Rich, Pastor Richard, you know, he's really good at the anger stuff. And so then I'm like, all right, well, five years later. So I know he's supposed to be here at this appointed time. And so if you've never taken notes, I would take notes. And I would have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. If you would help me, give him a good get rap shout, Pastor Joel, mom. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, and congratulations on the anniversary. That's amazing. It's no small thing. Hey, it is so good to be with you all this morning. I have heard wonderful things about you. And you know, I go to a lot of churches around the country. And from time to time, I step into churches that I'm like, yeah, I'm a little different from these folks. But when I'm here... I already feel like I'm at home. This feels so much like the church I come from. I love being with you guys, so I am glad to be with you all this morning. Um, we're going to talk about something that might be a little bit uncomfortable, but I'm, I'm hoping we can do it in a, um, in a way that doesn't make you feel... Well, I don't know. Maybe I want you to be a little uncomfortable. Sometimes it's a little bit... We're going to talk this morning about anger and how anger is connected to anxiety and how disappointment is connected to anger. Okay. You're like, what? what in the world? How are you going to cover all that ground, right? Well, I want to start off uh, by telling a, a story this morning, but I got to make sure for something. If you guys, uh, I'm going to tell you about some dumb things I did when I was angry, okay? So I need you to, if you would, everybody would raise your right hand for a second. We're going to be like in a court of law, and I need you to repeat after this. Repeat after me. Say, I, I promise I will not judge Joel for the dumb things. He did when he was angry. Okay, I feel like I'm in a safe space now. All right. So, you ever had something that just, like, triggers you out of nowhere? You're just going along, and all of a sudden, something happens, you're just like, ah! You ever had that? Yeah, if you're saying no, I'm, you're lying. I know, okay, but that's another message. But I, sometimes these things, they just hit me, and I'm just like, Oh, it makes me so mad. So I'm going to tell you a story this morning about something dumb I did. And I would not recommend you do this, but we're going to use this for an object lesson of what you not do, okay? So I grew up in a little country called Guatemala in, in Latin America. Anybody know Guatemala? Yeah, okay. It's a great place. We call it Guatebuena. So it's a little Spanish joke for you. But one of the things that, that drove me crazy in Guatemala is, so I would always get pulled over by corrupt cops down there, okay? As soon as they see my little white head bobbing, they'd be like, ooh, a target, right? They'd pull me over, and they'd hit me up for bribes. So I, I got super sensitive to cops hitting me up for bribes. It made me just so mad. I moved back to the U.S., you know, and haven't gotten hit up for a bribe here, but uh, I eventually moved to Peru. Well, I was living in Peru, loving my life, didn't have a car, so I never got pulled over by corrupt cops. But one day I was in a taxi with this guy. And uh, the taxi, I had paid him a certain amount of money to take me to this town. And as we're pulling into the town, there's this police checkpoint. And the police pull the taxi driver over, and I'm listening. You know, I don't think the, thing, the guy think, knows that I speak Spanish. Um, my friends joke with me. They say that I'm a reverse coconut. <laughs> I don't know if you know what that means. They say... Me creo latino, morenito por dentro, pero blanco por fuera. But anyway, so 
that, that means I, they're like, you, you think you're Hispanic on the inside, but you're a white guy. I'm like, okay, but I think like a Latino. So anyway, so I'm sitting there. The, guy does, the cop doesn't know I speak Spanish, but he starts hitting up this taxi driver for a bribe for the exact amount I just paid the dude. So I'm like, this guy's not going to make any money on this ride. Something rises up within me, and I jump out of the car, and I run over to the cop. Fortunately, the cop's about this tall. And I'm like, you corrupt individual. I do know some Spanish cuss words, but I would never use those. So it's like, you corrupt particular individual. What are you doing? I said, you, this kind of corruption is what's keeping these, this country down. People are trying to make a living, and you're taking your power and abusing it. And he's like, get back in the car. And I was like, I'm not going to get back in the car. You can arrest me if you want. Well, he didn't know what to do with that. I was like, give him his money back. So he gives the guy the money back, and then he, then he kind of ducks his head and runs back to his police station. And I'm like, but I'm still ticked. So I follow him into the police station. And all these cops are sitting around drinking coffee and smoking. And I'm like, all of you, you're all corrupt. You're all holding the country back. And these cops are like, what are you doing in here, gringo? Like, get out. And I'm like, oh, it's so wrong what you're doing, all of you. And I, and I said something crazy. Don't ever do this. I said, curses on all of you. And then I walked back to the car and got in the car. My dad was in the car. He's like, you proud of yourself? I was like, I am proud of myself. It's like, justice, justice has been done. Now, was that stupid of me to do? Absolutely. Could I have gotten shot? Probably not, because I found out later they don't have enough money to give the cops bullets. But, so here, here's what's crazy about it, okay? Just a little side end of the story. A couple weeks later, I came back into that same town, and the whole police station was gone. I said, what? Where'd the police station go? And they're like, oh, man, like a couple weeks ago, this flood came through, and the building was made from adobe bricks. It melted the whole police station to the ground, the flood. The police station was completely wiped out, and there were no corrupt cops standing around anymore. Don't mess with me. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Anyway. It's all the power of the Lord working through me, right? Anyway, but in seriousness, okay, let, let's talk about you for a second, okay? Let's talk about, here's what I know about you. I'm guessing you've never done anything as dumb as what I did, yelling at policemen. Be a hero of a TikTok video these days if you do. But I know that there's some things in you that when you see them, you go, that's just wrong. That is wrong. There's a sense of justice, and you go, no. I know some of you, man, you've got some family members, and you've seen what they've done, and you're like, that's so wrong. The way they treated dad, uh-uh, so wrong. Man, what happened with mom and the way they did with that thing with mom? Some of you just get, you, just, you look at the, that thing, your family members, and you go, that's so wrong. Some of you, man, you've had some people that have abused you in your past, and you look at them, and they're still running free, and you're going, Oh, it makes me so mad that they're still out there running free, acting like nothing ever happened. This got deep in a hurry, didn't it? Some of y'all, you've got, man, we just look around and go, there's so much injustice, and we get angry about it. And I believe that is, is what's called righteous anger. There is righteous anger. But let's be honest. For most of us, most of the time when we get angry, frustrated, irritated, it's really not righteous anger. Somebody doing something or a situation happening that we just don't like. In fact, we feel like it's threatening us in some way. So we're going to talk this morning about anger. The Apostle Paul said this, a really important verse. He said, in your anger, do not sin. You can pop the verse up there. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. We've been, you're talking about emotions here, right? And anger is one of these emotions. It's a really tricky emotion, but the, a couple key things to understand about anger are this. First of all, anger in itself is not a sin. Anger is just a sign. It's a sign that something you value is being threatened. Anger is like a, it's like a light on the dashboard of your car. 
that if you've been driving around and a light comes on, sometimes my wife will be like, hey, there's a light on the dashboard. And I'm like, oh, okay. And, you know, I'm like, well, how long has it been there? She's like, oh, three or four weeks. I'm like, three or four weeks? Sweetheart, why didn't you say something to me about the light on the dashboard? Oh, I didn't think it was that important. I'm like, a light on in the dashboard means something's not working right. Anger is like that light in the dashboard. It's pointing to something. In fact, anger is a secondary emotion. Uh, when, 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 you, when you think about anger, a lot of times, I know for guys, for us, we've basically got two, two emotions. You know, we're happy or angry. Right? How you doing? Happy. How you doing? I'm angry, right? There's two emotions. But anger actually comes from something, we feel something right before we get anger. Angry. There's some emotion that happens right before we get angry, and it can be hard sometimes because we get so used to, to ex expressing the anger, and it becomes this way that we feel powerful. We feel like we can take back control of the situation. But we're going to look this morning at where anger comes from, because anger always comes from fear. And it comes from fear of not getting one of three specific things. So here, here, this is super important. Write all this down if you can, or you can go back and listen to the message over and over again. I've also got books about this that go in depth in the back if you want to get those. But listen, every one of us have three basic hopes and dreams in our life, okay? We all have a dreams and hopes of having some sort of safety in our lives. It's this triangle that we put up here. We all want safety. We all want a sense of connection. And we all want a sense of empowerment. Now, there is nothing wrong with you for wanting these things. In fact, God made you to need these things. But he made you to get those things, those needs met from his love. Everybody, if you think about it, love offers all of these things. It offers a sense of safety. When you feel love, man, you feel like, man, somebody's got my back. I'm going to be all right. We're made to have that. We're made to have it in God's love. Sometimes safety looks like financial safety, security. Sometimes it looks like emotional security. And we're looking for love, and we want it to look like safety or security, right? It's, it also looks like connection. Connection, I mean, God was so connected with us in the beginning of time, it says he walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. That's total connection with God. Like, he's just hanging out with you. And we're also looking for love as empowerment. Empowerment says, man, I love you so much, I'm going to give you the power to make some of your own choices and decisions. And if you think about it, that's what God did with Adam and Eve, didn't he? He said, hey, you got the run of the whole place. I just ask you to not do one thing. This is what we're made for. And if you're looking for this, th this right here and anywhere other than God's love, you're going to come up disappointed. Which is why a lot of us, we get into marriage and we go, this isn't what it was supposed to be. He was supposed to offer me safety, and you don't feel safe. But here, here's the thing, guys. On your husband or wife's best day, they can't give you this. Only God can give you that. If you're looking for this sense of connection, connection sometimes can look like feeling seen or heard or valued, and you're like, man, I don't feel seen or heard by myself. Hey, you need to work that through, but, but you also got to understand your spouse on their best day, they can't give you that. Only God's love can give you that. And when Adam and Eve, when they sinned, it broke their perfect security connection and empowerment they found from God. And it says the first emotion they felt, do you remember what it was? It said they were afraid. Fear is always at the root of anger. Always. Anxiety, whatever you want to call it. But the quickest way to figure out that, you know, what your root issue is, is to look at what makes you angry. Okay, now really quick, I know there's some of you in this room that are going, well, this is awesome, this is for other people, I don't really get angry. Okay, we have found through scientific studies, research this, that people that are in this corner here, the connection corner here, they don't like to call it anger. They prefer to call it frustration. <laughs> oh, I don't get angry, I do get frustrated from time to time. Right? And here's why, because they've seen what anger can do to relationships, and so they don't want to, the connection thing, so they don't want to mess it up with that. So they don't like to call it anger, but it, it's still anger. <laughs> and typically it comes, in, this, in the next chart there, when we don't get safety, what we typically feel is abandonment. Mm -hmm. and, and, and a lot, to, and, and, and there's one area of these that's really sensitive to us, usually. Okay? So, so for example, if, if, man, if your dad didn't run around, if he ditched the family, there's a good chance that might be your sensitive area. And whenever you feel something threatening your safety, and that's why you, re that mar you married that guy that you married, that you're like, oh, I'm going to never marry somebody like my dad because he ran away from us, but now you're like, man, this guy is vaguely a lot like my dad. Because you were looking for something, and you ran to something that was similar, but, it, but it's because you were afraid of abandonment. 
For a lot of them in the, in the connection corner, their big fear is rejection. Whenever they feel the, the fear of rejection, I had a guy tell me one time, he's like, well, I never feel rejected because I usually just cut people off before I know they're going to reject me. I'm like, well, that's not healthy, right? But sometimes we do that. And over here, this is my corner. Welcome to my world. If you want to see me get angry, you threaten my empowerment. So you know what makes me really angry? Houston traffic. Now, I don't get angry because it's threatening my safety. We're going like five miles an hour, if we're moving at all, right? On 45, it's like you're just sitting there. It's a parking lot. I don't get angry because of it's threatening my connection. I have no desire to connect with other people in cars around me. Hey, bro, what's up? How's your day going? No, I don't do that, right? You know what's straight? I'm trying to get somewhere, and all these cars are blocking my path, and I'm angry. Now, my wife does not get angry in traffic except when she's riding with me. Because she sees traffic as a great chance to connect. But I'm over here all like, come on, man. And she's like, hey, if you don't calm down, I'm going to get out of this car and walk home. Because I'm threatening our connection through my anger. And isn't that wild how anger works sometimes? The same thing can make different people angry for different reasons. But the important thing to understand is this. When you get angry, it's always, when you get angry at something happening around you, it's always because of something happening inside of you. So I want to look at a couple of different ways that anger shows up, okay? Different ways you may say, well, I don't get angry. Here's the first example of, of the way anger shows up, all right? You pop that one up. The volcano. Some of you say, man, I hardly ever get angry. It takes two, three years for the resentment to build to the point. <laughs> like a volcano just... <laughs> and then one day it's like... <laughs> and everybody's... You're like screaming and yelling. And then once you get it out, you're like, man, I feel good. Let's go out for pizza. <laughs> and your kids are in the corner cowering like... <laughs> like, I, don't, I only get angry like every three or four years. Yeah, but it's real ugly when it happens. Right? He said, well, I don't really have a problem with anger. Just because you're bottling it down and stuffing it in there, it doesn't mean you don't have a problem with anger. It's going to build and come out some way. Next one, another way that anger shows up. I call this the scorekeeper. This is the person that they never comment on it while it's happening. They just go. Oh. And then 13 years later. They bring up what happened on the honeymoon. And you're like, sweetheart, what? The honeymoon? That was 13 years ago. Oh, yeah. You do that all the time. And they're calm, they're deadpan about it, but they're angry. Just because you're keeping score and not saying anything doesn't mean you're not angry. Here's another one. The Velvet Harpoon Champion. I had a lady come up to me recently after I spoke a series of four messages, and she came up and she goes, sweet lady. She's like, I really enjoyed this last message. Um, you know, it's so much better than the other ones because you were actually preaching the gospel this time. And then she walked away. And I'm all like... <laughs> so sweet but she's jabbing me in the heart you ever met people like that Woo, they're so sweet about it but they just trash you angry they're angry people it's another way anger shows up here's another one the deep freeze when they get angry man they just shut down and they'll say noble things like well i just don't want to say anything i regret but they don't talk to you for two three weeks even though you live in the same house. <laughs> and they act like they're so noble. I'm not going to say anything that I would feel sorry for later, but they're angry. Y'all are laughing, so I know it's resonating, right? <laughs> things we laugh at are things that make us feel a little uncomfortable. Next one, the gang fighter. This is where when you get around your friends, you feel a little more bold. So I've seen couples get together and, you know, the one, one couple will start kind of making fun with her friends of the spouse. You know, you know, he always does that. 
blah, blah, blah. And I'm watching it go down. I'm like, this is not going to go well when they get home. <laughs> but because she's with her friends or with, he's with his friends, he's making fun of his, with his spouse, he starts making, you know, kind of subtly making jabs at her spouse that he never make just in front of her. But he feels empowered around his friends because he's a gang fighter. We'll move along. <laughs> the gorilla fighter. You know what a gorilla is, not, not this kind of gorilla. Like it's the gorilla fighter that comes in a sneak attack. You're minding your own business and they're like, Wah! And you're, sh and you're just like, what? They, they come in with some vicious comment out of nowhere. And you're like, what in the world? Oh, I just uh, I thought it'd be funny to say that. <laughs> no, that came from somewhere deep. Next one. Captain Sarcastic. Oh, man, we're all guilty of this. You know, sarcasm is a form of anger. It's a safe form of anger because you can say something sarcastic and then people are like, dude, what's your problem? You're like, oh, hey, can't you take a joke? <laughs> Isn't that how it goes? Yeah. Sarcasm. When I hear sarcasm, I'm like, oh, there's some anger. Listen, we've all got some anger and we've all got to choose to acknowledge it because anger is pointing to something deep within us. And, and this is where anger becomes a gift. When you begin to recognize that when something happens outside of you that makes you angry or frustrated or irritated, it's pointing to something deep inside of you that God, that, that you need to surrender to God. Because this, it, it's a threat, to, in some way, it's a threat to your security, your connection, or your control, or empowerment. And you're only going to get those things through God's love. And when you get angry, it can be a sign that you're seeking that stuff from a place that can never give it. The money, the power, the people you know, the better job, the better position at your job, it'll never give it to you. And when you recognize what's going on deeper on a deeper level, that's where you grow spiritually because we're all connected. I mean, you guys have been talking about this, how it's all connected. The soul, the Greek word for soul is suke, which is the word psychology comes from it. It's your, it's your mind, it's your desires, and it's your emotions. And they're all interconnected. And sometimes it can be hard to separate it. But remember this. In your anger, don't sin. So how do we make sure that in our anger we don't sin? I'm going to leave you three points this morning. We're going to look at how you can address it when you feel that anger rising up within you. The first thing you got to do is you got to regularly know what makes you angry. All right? That's the first key. Know what makes you angry. I know for me, anytime I'm feeling anger inside of me, it's some sort of a threat to my control over a situation or to having been humiliated or embarrassed because that corner is always connected. So my daughter, when she won't eat her food, and I'm just like, and just, you know, kids just can, you can be the sweetest person, but kids, your kids, you love them. Man, they can pull some stuff out of you, can't they? You're like, where did that demon come from in me? We love them, but man, you're just like, <sighs> when my daughter won't eat, I get so mad. I'm like, okay, it's affecting my control here. And I can't, you know, I can't shove the food down her throat, right? It's not right, but that's what it is. And so you know what consistently makes you angry. And if you're saying, I, I don't know what it is. Listen, we developed a test, and this is the website. You can write it down. It's called whyamiangry.info. You can take this quick test. Don't do it right now. I'll know if you're taking it. I can see what you're doing. Why am I angry? Info is a quick test we developed to show you which corner of the, the security, the safety, the connection of control is probably your sensitive area. So you can take that test, and then if you find out it's, you know, which one of those corners it is, um, and you really want to unpack it, I've got a book in the back that you can read that'll help you unpack that. But, but you got to recognize what makes you angry consistently, because a lot of times anger comes in in cycles. In fact, right now is a huge time for anger, disappointment, and fear because it's the holidays. A lot of you are about to get around family members that are going to remind you why you moved across the country. <laughs> you get around your brother and you're like, oh man, he's always so belittling. Why does he always belittle me that way? And why does he always got to flash his money all around? We all got one of those family members, right? And everything's about money for them. They flash it around and you, get, you just get irritated and angry. And, and, and a lot of times anger shows up because of fear, right? And sometimes it's because of stuff that happened in past holidays when you were around, some baggage that came with 
hanging around with family because you just bump into each other and get hurt. So we've got to recognize that and know when you're going into a situation that's probably going to make you angry, like for me, when I'm about to go into traffic, especially you know, in Houston, my wife, she will literally grab me and she'll take me and put me against the wall and she'll go, sweetheart, it's five o'clock on a Friday. We are in Houston. We're about to go down 45. It's going to be a bad traffic. And I need you to deal with that right now before we leave. And that sounds ridiculous. But that little reminder often helps me go, okay, I'm going into a situation that always makes me angry. Calm it down. Calm it down. Maybe for some of you, you know that every time it's the battle to come to church. You know how it is. You're fighting, get the kids in the car. You're fighting in the car. Everybody's screaming. You got worship music playing louder and louder so you don't hear the screaming. Like, turn up KSBJ so, you don't, so I don't hear. And they're like, you're right. And then you get to church and you're like, praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. But you've been screaming at each other all the way to church. Hey, you know it's the battle that always ensues in church. So what can you do? to cut it off at the pass before it happens on the way to church or before school. You know there's always bad. Like, know what makes you angry consistently because there's patterns to our anger. The second thing, when you get angry, you have got to slow it down, okay? Take some time out. Uh, James offers this really powerful verse. Here's, here's what he says. He says, brothers, know this. Everyone should be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Now, now, I don't know about you, but I tend to do the reverse of this. I'm quick to anger and quick to speak. Right? My, my dad told me this one time. He said, listen, it's always best when you go into a situation that's making you angry to go in like a paranoid cat. Going, there must be something I don't know. He's like, and if it's really what you think it is, you can turn into a lion later. But most of us go in like a lion. Rawr! And then we find out something we didn't realize, and we're like, oops. I had a situation a couple while back. I was sitting at a stoplight. The light turned green. I waited, like, patiently for about a second and a half. And <laughs> then I laid on the horn. I'm like, what is going on? Why aren't we moving? And this guy in front of me offers me like this conciliatory hand gesture with his middle <laughs> finger. And then I'm even mad. I'm like, what's going on? And then I see this poor man out in front of all the cars rolling across in a wheelchair as fast as he can. And I'm like, I went in like a lion and I should have gone in like a paranoid cat. Right? And that's what we do. We got to be slow to speak quick to hear what's going on what is it that i don't know you see your son doing that thing and you're like what the oh, you're like, okay clearly there's something i don't understand here son what's going on here and you could turn into a lion later if it's what you think it is but maybe but maybe there's something you don't know slow to speak and slow down and then finally is this this is the, this is the last point the third point i'm going to close with this when you recognize that anger is a secondary emotion what you need to do is you need to get to the root of it and you need to figure out what's the core emotion that's driving why I'm feeling angry, disappointed, frustrated, because there's a fear in the base of it. And I've found that when it's time, when it's time to express it, this is really important. And, and you don't want to express it in the heat of the moment. Some of you get into a fight with your spouse and you want to do, let's get it solved right now. And, and maybe it's not the best time to do that. Maybe you need to say, give them a time frame. Say, hey, when we put the kids to bed, it's going down. Don't say it that way. But when we put the kids to bed, I'd really like to talk about what just happened and then put it aside. But then start to ask yourself, Lord, I need you to reveal to me what was the primary emotion that I was feeling when I got angry? Because anger is just a sign. It's just pointing to something. And when it comes time to express that anger, you need to make sure to keep it about your issues, not theirs. So I've found things like this. When I found out that you had spent that money on that motorcycle without checking with me, it made me feel unsafe financially. Because, man, we were counting on that in case we get in trouble. And I just felt a real threat to my security. And listen, most people can relate to that. 
because we've all got our sensitive issues of security, safety, connection, and control. And when you express using primary emotions, first of all, it diffuses the situation. But second of all, it helps you get a little more in touch with who God made you to be and what your sensitive areas are, that you're looking for love in all the wrong places. You're looking for security in all the wrong places. You're looking for connection and control. And, and the reality of it is that God's love is the source of all of those things you're looking for. And it seems so ethereal to say that. What you need, all we need is love. Oh, yeah, maybe. We also need money, right? Like, there's all sorts of things we need, but the reality of it is you were made for love, made from love, and because of Jesus, you're called to return to the love that God gave to you because he forgave your sins, washed them white as snow, set you on a track through your sins as far as the east is or from the west, and when he looks at you now, he says, hey, you're my beloved. Come back to me. I got what you need. And all that anger you're feeling, all that worry about the government situation and about COVID and all these things that you've just been weighing us down and they're making us angry. God's saying, hey, I got the answer and it's right here. And if you're looking to Pastor Juan to meet all your emotional needs, he's never going to be able to pull it off. Can't do it. He's a great pastor. You're asking something impossible from a human being. Only God's love can give you that. If you're looking to your spouse to pull that off, it's never going to happen. If you're looking to the government, it's never going to happen. If you're looking to that paycheck, it's never going to happen. And you're going to find yourself perpetually angry, disappointed, and frustrated. But when you surrender and say, God, this anger I'm feeling inside me, I know it's pointing something. I'm looking for your love and something that's never going to give it to me. So I want to surrender myself and say, God, I'm going to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness and I trust that all those other things I'm looking for, the security, the connection, the control, I'm going to trust that as I seek your kingdom first and your righteousness, all those other things will be given to me as well. It's Matthew 6, And that's where emotions like anger become a gift because they point us to areas of our life where we still need to surrender more to him. And surrender is the ultimate victory. You guys receive that? I'm going to say a prayer. In fact, if, you really, if you've been struggling with anger, fear, I want to encourage you to come forward here. We're not going to do anything like epic or emotional here. We're just going to do a real, we're going to make a decision. We're going to commit, commit our hearts to the Lord. If you want to come forward, we can pray for you here. If you want to stay where you're seated, I'm going to say a prayer for all of you. That are just, if you've been struggling with anger, maybe you've been struggling with fear, because remember, fear is going to eventually lead to anger. Maybe you've been feeling resentment towards your spouse. Maybe you've been feeling angry towards everybody around you. We're going to say a prayer, and, and, and I believe that the Lord is going to help us gain some insight into what he's been trying to communicate to us, because the crazy thing is anger can be a gift if you use it to point to him, the answer, the one who has the love you need, and you can lean into that. So just, let's all bow our heads. Lord, I pray this morning for everyone here that's been, man, whatever it is, the emotion that they've been feeling, whether it's showed up as fear or as anger or as resentment. Maybe they've been just bottling it up, and they know they've been bottling up because they don't want to address it. They don't want the uncomfortable feelings of it. Lord, I pray this morning that as we lift our hands to you, Lord, you would just, man, just take, take us into your arms. Give us that love that we know we can depend on. And I pray, Lord, that you'd be working on our minds as well, reminding us of what we talked about, what you taught in James, Lord, that it is your love that is the source of everything we're looking for. And anytime we feel that anger, that fear, the anxiety, the irritation, it's because we're looking for love in all the wrong places. But there's a right place, and that's your love. So I pray for everyone this morning. I pray this would be a breaking point moment in their life where they, things change, like a watershed moment. Things begin to change as they begin to see more of who you made them to be, who you intended them to be. We believe the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter and brighter. Our best days are ahead. You are making us into who you called us to be. You who began a good work in us will be faithful to bring it to completion. So we depend on that this morning with confidence. In your name, amen. amen. Hey, so I, uh, I'm gr so thankful this morning. I, I send out a weekly little short email. If you want to sign up for it, you can just text my name, Joel, to that number and follow the instructions there. You'll be signed up for a e weekly email. I won't spam you on anything. Man, Pastor Juan, thank you. Thank you so much. You want to take it over? Oh, yeah. Thanks a lot, you guys. Amen. Amen. Why don't you guys give the Lord a round of applause and the word that Pastor Joel brought this morning? Pastor Joel, thank you so much for your wisdom and sharing your heart with us.
Um, man, isn't it good to know that we serve a God that is, he provides a safe place for us. He provides a safe place for our emotions, for the things that we are feeling, and that he, we can go to his feet and acknowledge our anger and our frustrations and our emotions and process those in such a healthy way. Amen. I don't know about you guys, but it's just so reassuring because we all struggle with these emotions. Amen. Amen. I just want to let you guys know that if you guys are seeking prayer and there's somebody that you want to touch and stand in agreement with this morning, our workshop is over here. Miss Liz and Henry, if you don't mind um, having some prayer partners over there with us, um, go over there, um, communicate with them and share with them so they can pray with you guys. Um, I also want to remind you after this service, we are going to have our Meet the Pastors tent. It's going to be right out front. Our pastors here at Get Brought would love to talk to you. We would love to meet you and just um, get to know you. And so if you guys want to take some time to do that on your way out, we would love that. Um, Father, we just thank you so much for this service, God. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your love. We thank you that you provide a safe place for us, God, that you died on that cross for us, for all of our emotion, for all of our sin, for everything, God. And we just love you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys have an amazing week and you are dismissed.